One of the most intimidating things about using your Canon M50 for your YouTube videos is getting the settings right in the camera. And I think a lot of people just become overwhelmed with the idea of tweaking and changing settings in the camera manually, and they just leave the whole thing on automatic. And in the end, you don't get nearly the quality result that you could if you actually took a little bit of time and tuned the camera in and set it up so it produced an image was really just to your liking and suits the style of YouTube video that you're producing. And arguably the most important thing to the way your video looks is the lighting and this video is part of a playlist where I go through all my tips and tricks in using this camera for your YouTube videos and certainly lighting is the most important one. So make sure you check out that video because the settings really won't do you too much good if you have not tuned your lighting in first. And probably the easiest part of the settings and maybe even the most fun part of the settings is the picture styles. And the picture styles are essentially like a film simulation or a color simulation. They're just a set of settings in the camera that just allows you to choose what sort of style of coloration you want. It gives you control over the color tones, it gives you control over the saturation, the contrast, the sharpness, and there's a few different built-in ones and there's really four that I recommend using for YouTube videos. And those are the standard picture profile, the neutral picture profile, the portrait picture profile, and the faithful picture profile. And what you're seeing right now is just my standard settings that I use for all of my YouTube videos. And this is the neutral picture profile. And I've just taken that and I've just turned down the contrast about one notch in the, in the menu below. And I've turned the sharpness up two notches. Now we're in the standard picture profile and I think this one looks really good and I have used this before. For me, if I'm gonna use this, I want to turn down the, the contrast just a little bit and I also turn down the sharpness just a little bit just to soften up the look on my skin. And you'll often find that a lot of people uh, think that the image coming out of this camera is actually too sharp and isn't very flattering on their skin. And just by turning down that uh, contrast and turning down that sharpness, it just softens things up and it looks a little bit more natural and just a little bit more flattering on the skin. Now we're in the portrait picture profile and this one is just generally designed for taking portraits of people so as a rule it tends to be a bit more flattering on the skin. It's got a little bit lower contrast, a little bit more muted tones but once again really the only way to work out which of these picture profiles works for you is just to play with them in your own environment, in your own lighting. So I've sort of gone through and tried these different picture profiles for myself and I did eventually settle on the neutral picture profile. Now we're in the faithful picture profile and this one has like these really muted tones. It's a bit more of a filmic look and I have often used this for sort of family travel when I just sort of want a low contrast sort of almost Hollywood feel to it. And if you want it to even look more filmic and more cinematic, once you go into the faithful picture profile, you have the ability to decrease your contrast and saturation and sharpness. So now I've just gone down and I've turned down the contrast, I've turned down the sharpness, I've turned down the saturation and what you can see is it's starting to look very filmic, the tones are much more muted, and you're getting a very a much more cinematic feel. And, and particularly if you're sort of outdoors, this can be a really good one because it sort of evens out those harsh shadows and, and bright spots. And it is kind of a nice one, I think, particularly for outdoors. But in this type of environment, I want a little bit more color and a little bit more punch to the image that I'm putting up on YouTube. And the way we access our picture profiles is we just are in our normal mode. Here we are, we hit Q up in that top corner. And then along the bottom here is where we've got our different picture profiles. And if I page over, uh, this is the standard. That's one of the ones I recommend checking out. This is the portrait. Uh, over here is the neutral. And then just on the next page here are the faithful. Those are the four that I recommend. And if you go into each one, we can click into the standard, and then we click info. And up here we have our um, uh, sharpness, and that takes our sharpness up and down. If you're finding that it's a bit too sharp on your skin and you're seeing sort of every pore in your face and you're not into that, just turn that down a bit. Uh, the next one is our contrast. Once again, this is another one that's worth tweaking down if you just want to soften up the image a bit, if you think there's just too much contrast or a little bit more too much detail in your face. And then here's the saturation. 
Sometimes with YouTube videos, people like a little bit more saturation, a little bit more color punch. So you can just pop that up and down. You can even see that, what it's doing there. Don't actually trust exactly what you're seeing in the, in the screen on the M50. You really have to take the shots, bring them into your computer and see. So you can see how crazy colorful that is, uh, way over the top on the skin tones. But you, you, you might want to just either pop it down one or two like that. And um, once again, just shoot some shots, uh, have a look in the camera, come back, shoot again, and just keep playing with it in your environment, with, in your lighting to figure out which one you think looks best for the sort of setup you're doing or the style you're going for. So I'm just editing this video and I've realized I've left the sharpening up too high in the footage for the rest of this video. So what you see in the talking head part, that is not the way my video normally looks and it's not the way your video should look either. But it is how the video would look just coming in the standard picture profile with the standard sharpening. And over sharpening is one of the problems with the Canon M50, so you do need to make sure you turn down that sharpening. But even though that image isn't perfect, all the information you get from here on in is spot on, and I hope that this will help you get better footage out of your Canon M50. And even before we go into the picture styles and we start experimenting with them, we really need to get our white balance right. And, and I do that manually, and I use the Calvin value to set the white balance. And just to show you uh, how much changing the white balance or getting the white balance wrong can affect the way your image looks, I'm just going to jump in and I'm going to change it now. And I think you're going to be astonished by how much it skews the image and the colors in our image. Now, the correct white balance for this scene is about 4200 Calvin which is a setting in the menu system I'm gonna show you here in a second, but I've just gone in and I've manually set it to 2500 Kelvin. So now you can see it looks like I'm on the surface of the moon or something. And what's happening here is every light, whether it be sunlight or shade or reflected light or artificial light, like the bulb I'm using here, has a Kelvin color temperature. And the camera, unlike our eyes, which automatically compensates for what the colors are in the environment and then our brain just sort of calculates it out to look a certain way, the camera can't do that. It just picks it up the way that it comes into the camera. So you have to tell the camera what color the light is so that your image looks natural. And now we're at 10,000 Kelvin, the other end of the scale. So you can see on the one end of the scale, we are cold and blue, and on the other end of the scale, we're sort of red and crazy sunburned looking. And the way we set our color temperatures is just once again, we go up to the queue, and then we're gonna hit this, um, the white balance will be here. We're using the Kelvin value, so it says K, but right now on yours, it'll probably say AWB, because yours is probably set up to auto white balance at the moment. So we're gonna click on the AWB, and then that's gonna bring our white balance up along the bottom here. We're gonna page over to the Kelvin value, and then we're going to hit the set color temperature. This is gonna allow, to, allow us to change this number up and down. Now, how do we know what number we want this to be? What we do is we go look on the light bulb or the light source that is giving us the primary, primary light and it should have a Kelvin value on it. Now, if you're in direct sunlight, the Kelvin value I think is about 5,500. If you're in shade, it's gonna be more like 4,600. So you can sort of play with this and just look at the, the color tone on your skin to work out what looks best or what you're happiest with. But in this case, I've got a 4,000 Kelvin bulb, and I've been happy with this when I've set the color temperature in the camera to 4,200. But the best way to do this is just to do it in your own environment with your own lighting, uh, with the setup that you're gonna use normally, and then take a few shots, maybe at a few different Kelvin values, and then put them in your computer and look at them and work out what you think work, looks or works best for you. And in my case, um, I've actually gone, even though the bulb is a 4,000 Kelvin, I've ended up doing a 4,200 Kelvin because I just thought that looked a little bit better and just warmed my skin up a little bit. Now the next thing we need to talk about is our shutter speed, our ISO, and our aperture value. We're gonna set all this manually, and what we're gonna do is, uh, actually I'm gonna have to stop this so I can show you. Up here, you'll see we get a choice between manual or automatic. That is in the menu system up here in the top left corner. So if that doesn't have an M in front of it, uh, if it looks like this, if it looks like that, then we're in automatic mode. We wanna click on that, we wanna select the M, we wanna hit OK, and now we're in the manual mode. That's gonna allow us to set our um, shutter speed, our aperture, and our ISO manually. Now, 
What we need to do to start with is you want to take the aperture, you want to make it the lowest number you've got. On this lens that I'm using right now, that's f1.8. If you're using the Sigma 16 millimeter, that's going to be f1.4. And if it's uh, the kit lens, that's going to be f3.5. Then we are going to set our shutter speed to 1 over 50. And to start with, we're going to set our ISO to 100. Now, if you're in a situation like me, where if you set it to these settings and you can see that the scene is too dark, what we're going to do is we're going to take that ISO value and we're going to continue to increase it until it looks about right. Then to make sure if it's right or not, we're going to half press the shutter button and see if that little dot lines up in the middle there at the bottom. This is our exposure meter. This tells us if, it, the, if the camera thinks that our image is exposed properly. So it's hovering there about the middle, so it thinks that we're exposed properly. I'm not actually sitting in the proper position right now because I'm leaning in to adjust the settings, so that makes it a bit hard. But all we want is to make sure that that is lined up. So we've got this at 1 over 50. We got here at uh, f1.8 on this uh, camera or this lens. In yours, just set it to whatever the lowest number you can get. The lowest number allows you to get the most light into the camera, which means that the open opening that allows light into the camera is at its largest size. It's kind of confusing. The smaller number, the bigger the opening, but that's just how it works. So set that number to the smallest possible, and then slide your ISO up until you've got everything properly exposed and that little line is in the middle. Now, the Canon M50 doesn't do really that great with high ISO. So if this ISO number here in the corner is getting up over a thousand, then it means we don't have enough light and we're gonna need to bring more light into our scene to get a good quality image. Because the further that goes over about a thousand, the more grainy and gritty our footage is and the poorer quality footage we actually get. So we wanna make sure we keep that under a thousand. Now what happens if we set everything up and it's too bright? If it's too bright when you're at ISO 100, and I'm just going to simulate this by just putting this up to 1600, simulate it being too bright. Say that you've got this down at 100 and it's too bright still, then what we're going to do is we're going to use the shutter speed to bring this into properly exposed. So we're just going to hit half press the button again there. Now we're properly exposed. So imagine this is uh, the ISO is at 100, not a th uh, 1600 or whatever I've just set it to. And if it's too light, we're going to use that uh, shutter speed. We're going to increase that until we're properly exposed. And the last thing we're going to talk about is shutter speed and if you just want the simple answer, I want you to go into your camera, into region, and set it to PAL mode, and then I want you to shoot in 25 frames per second in full HD. And what we want to do is for our shutter speed, to start with, we're going to have to go into the menu system, find the wrench icon, and go over to the number 3. Then we're going to click the video system, and then we're going to select PAL mode. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just back out of that. We're once again going to hit the Q button, we're going to go over here, full HD, and we're going to choose 25 frames per second. Now what you can hear from a lot of people and a lot of big YouTubers is shooting 24 frames per second because that is the most cinematic thing. And just to cover this off, yes, 24 frames per second is seen as cinematic. It is seen as cinematic because Hollywood movies, back when we had the big reels, those little pictures only slotted through at 24 frames per second. So we've gotten used to watching movies that are 24 frames per second. So even in the digital age where none of this matters and we choose any frame rate we want, people generally choose 24 frames per second because it looks more cinematic. And you'll hear that from all kinds of big YouTubers. But what I've found is a lot of the YouTubers and a lot of even the big YouTubers don't shoot in 24 frames per second anymore. They shoot in 25 frames per second. And the reason for this is to the, to the naked human eye and when we're watching video, we cannot tell the difference between 24 and 25 frames per second. It is completely indistinguishable because it is such a small difference. But when we're shooting in 24 frames per second and we decide to go shoot something in slow motion, our only option in the menu system is to shoot at 60 frames per second. If you shoot footage in 60 frames per second and you're putting it into a project or movie or YouTube video that is a 24 frames per second production, and you decide to use that footage you shot and say, hey, I shot that, I meant for it to be slow motion, but right now I just realized that this actually works better at regular speed and regular motion. If you try and play that 60 frames per second in your 24 frames per second video, it gets choppy and jumpy. 
It's just the way it works. I won't go into too much detail, but effectively every six frames or so, it dumps a frame. And you've probably seen it before, whether it be your footage or somebody else's, when they get the frame rates mixed up like this, is there'll be a panning shot and it'll pan and jump, pan and jump, pan and jump. This sort of defeats our whole purpose of sh trying to do cinematic video. And we know if we are trying to do cinematic video, the slow motion is a big part of that. So at some point in the project, you're gonna be shooting at these higher frame rates. If you change it into PAL mode and use 25 frames per second, we have a slow motion option in that menu system, which is 50 frames per second. And the power of this is we can go out and shoot all day at 50 frames per second. And then when we're editing the footage, we can decide whether we wanna use any of that in slow motion or any of that in regular motion. And because 50 frames per second divides evenly into 25 frames per second, all that happens is every other frame gets dropped and we get perfectly smooth regular motion which looks exactly like we intentionally shot it in 25 frames per second but if we choose with any of that footage to make it slow motion we can slow it down to 50 percent and we get perfect slow motion if you're interested in succeeding on youtube with your canon m50 i have made an entire playlist dedicated to doing just that so click on the link that's on screen now and then i'll take you straight through to that playlist